Right, um, what we're doing today, all right, um, is obviously um, because I stand before you opposing everything that they've um, spent all of your entire life convincing you is sensible, um, that I'd work from um, what they're convincing you is sensible. So we have here, now I've already said that I didn't watch Gordon Brown's uh, conference speech um, but I've printed off the notes from MSN, um, uh, posted by Laura Snook, news, senior news editor. Right. Gordon Brown is about to deliver the speech of his political life, maybe. I'll be following it live, this is Laura Snook. Um, join me here for minute by minute coverage. So I thought, well, I'll cover it. I'll cover Laura Snook's coverage, minute by minute. So, 2.25 to begin isn't it exciting Gordon's wife Sarah just took the floor a bit cheeky thought they'd have enough of their own to introduce her husband the BBC's commentators are saying it's hard to imagine Sherry Blair doing the same <laughs> don't you think it's a bit dodgy that his wife is <laughs> blooming introducing him anyway it's like couldn't you get somebody famous couldn't you get somebody suave somebody who will just by being there will have the public going, wow, loads of people believe in this man. Oh no, but his wife will do it. Couldn't get his mum, she's disowned him. I'm sorry if she's dead, I'd really. 227. Your Love Keeps Lifting Me Higher by Jackie Wilson. The chosen track for the PM's entrance. <coughs> Wonder what the track is for his exit. That's lovely, isn't it? Your love keeps lifting me, lifting me higher and higher. I think not, dear Gordon. Um, 2.28. He's going to get straight to the point. Tell us who he is and what he believes in. I didn't come into politics... I've got to st stop doing the impressions, carry on. I didn't come into politics to be a celebrity or thinking I would always be popular. Laughter from the crowd. It's like, no, Gordon. You came in it for the money and for the power. 2.30. If people say I'm too serious, quite honestly, there's a lot to be serious about. Don't call him dour. He managed to smile. We saw that smile, didn't we? So he had obviously written that into his speech. Um, because he said, if, if people say I'm too serious, there's a lot to be serious about. And then a smile. Fakey, fakey, mm, smile. Um, 2.32... He says he'll admit his mistakes. I do hope he gets to, to do that somewhere down the line. And was shocked by what happened with the 10 pence tax debacle because on the side of working families is the only place I want to be. Sorry, I thought that was... <laughs> I couldn't help it then. It's a fairer Britain that Gordon wants. Oh, great stuff then. So he's going to get going to get all the, uh, the Britons that are in Iraq bombing people that they don't want to bomb that don't want to be bombed, that have done nothing at us, is going to bring them back in to their families, to be fair. Because that's fair, isn't it? And he's not going to have the huge rich-poor divide and we're going to have, um, like, we're going to be able to support, like, farmers and things like that so that we can all eat instead of, like, bomb the planet. No. But he said it, so it must be true. Right. 2.33. Times of... Oh, my word. I think the dog's having a bit of a moment. You all right, Bales? <coughs> oh, get it up, lass. Deary me. Time, 2.33. Times have changed. See, this isn't scripted. See, and I have animals around. Now, you couldn't do that if you were in government. Because you have to be professional. And... Part of my thingy, my EU, if you know what I'm on about, is that, um, sod it, you know what I mean? It, it, that's, I won't be fake, won't do it. Um, right, times have changed since 1997, he says. Yes, haven't they? The world has just turned into one steaming pile of shit. And we need to raise our game accordingly raise our game you know what i mean it's like no you need to put it right mate you know 
The collapse of banks, your fault. Spiralling oil prices, your fault. A resurge in Asia. I don't know what that means, but I should imagine it's your fault. I'm talking to Gordon here, not you. <laughs> Unless you are Gordon, in which case... Um, it's a global age. Gordon wants Labour to be the rock of fairness on which people can stand. There's that word again. Fair. I don't see any fair at the minute. I don't see any... The people he's being fair to having a goddamn rat's pip of what goes on. Nobody is allowed to have a say except Mr Fair who's spending all the earthly resources on bombing. Right, 2.35, it's out again. He wants you to believe this. Right, he wants this word going in your head. They, they write it like this on purpose. Fair duties for all, matched to fair opportunities for all. Anyone who says the government should butt out, I love this bit, will be on the wrong side of history. Oh no, Gordon, oh no. <laughs> Bless your little heart, sweetheart, but you're wrong, mate. You, you don't have long left. But that fair duties for all matched to fair opportunities for all, it's like work. You work. Make sure you work. If you don't work, you're no good to me. You will work. But where's the fair duties to all matched for fair opportunities to all? How many people can't get a job? How many people go to university and can't get a job when they get out to pay off their student loan? Do you know what I mean? They make it so you earn, owe them even more money to start with. And then they tax you on everything that you've, that you earn. And they tax you on everything you buy. And then they've got another thing just to squeeze out even more from you they get you to insure yourself and insure everything around you so you're giving them even more money right and then they can just take it away like that any old time they please but it's fair because he says it is 237 hard work effort and enterprise are what labor thinks really matters and should be rewarded work Make sure you work whatever you do. You work. Because let's face it, if you don't work, you're stuffed. You're stuffed because it costs you to be alive. Whilst he's running around. Anyway. Work, work, work. 239. Those who believe in the dogma of unbridled free market forces have been proven wrong. Now, I must admit, I have absolutely no idea what that means. So, I apologise. But he says he wants to build a world-leading financial system. Now, that scares the hell out of me. And the work begins now. Well, tomorrow, when he and Alistair Darling will meet with the US banking sector. <sighs> banking, man. So, basically, you have a room full of gold. All right? And that means that... You control the lives of everybody on the planet. You control what they eat, whether they get to eat, whether they get to have anywhere to live, whether they have warmth, because you've got a room full of gold. £2.40! £2.40! Banking speculators beware! Bonuses will no longer be paid for speculating, but for hard work and results. Don't think, just do. That's saying. Don't think about it. Don't make any decisions. Don't ponder. Don't use your own brain. The only way you will get anywhere. I don't know if you can hear my phone's ringing downstairs, but I'm not running down there. So... Oh, I've got to go anyway, because my... Because I did this before. All right, sure. I did this before and went way, way over. So I shall end this one now. And then, ooh, ooh. So don't speculate while I'm away. Don't think anything for yourself. But be fair, all right? And then I'll come back to you with 2.41. Bye-bye. <laughs>